Hello again. Today we're going to go through setting up the crossband repeater function on the Kenwood TMD710G. This one's fairly easy to set up. Longest part will be setting up the frequencies you want to use as far as simplex frequency to access the Kenwood radio um, and as far as if you're going to be crossbanding to another simplex frequency or repeater frequency. You tend to want to stay away from repeaters that are linked together into a big network um, tends to have effects on the functionality in some cases depending on the radios you're using and the power you're transmitting with the repeaters linked together already there is will be a even bigger delay in all of the repeaters opening um, they can cause interference between the links connecting the repeaters together always try and stay on one a single repeater not a group of repeaters some other legalities involved with crossband repeating as most people assume you are only using two frequencies which that is the case whenever you are using crossband repeat from simplex to simplex but if you are accessing a repeater using crossband you're actually using three frequencies for the crossband. You're using the simplex that you are using to talk to your mobile radio and using both the input and output frequency of the repeater. For that it's important to remember that you have to ID on all three frequencies to stay within FCC regulations. In order to do that you're going to have to set up one frequency that will transmit simplex on the input frequency of the repeater. For the simple fact whenever you do transmit through the crossband you are transmitting on the input frequency which is either a positive or negative offset from the repeaters output frequency. Um, I'll be using the Rocky Mountain Radio League Evergreen Repeater, which is the frequency is 146.340. For the input with a negative offset, the input frequency of the repeater is 145.740. It is a negative offset. The standard 2 meter repeater offset is 600 hertz. So you'll want to adjust one of your simplex frequency, uh, simplex frequency to where you can transmit on the repeater's output frequency. Um, we'll go ahead and set that up right now. First thing you'll want to do is on the Kenwood TMD710, go ahead and set your frequencies you want to use. I'll go ahead and set the channel A to my simplex frequency that I'll be using, which will be 445.700. When using crossband repeat, I always recommend using a full CTCSS tone squelch. Um, that will prevent, helps to prevent other people that might end up on the simplex frequency from accidentally transmitting on a repeater when they're not expecting to. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but using crossband, like I said, you to stay within regulations, you have to transmit your FCC call sign on all three frequencies being used, which they will not be aware of if they're transmitting onto the repeater accidentally via your crossband. So I always recommend setting up a full CTCSS tone squelch. Um, it won't allow that way it won't allow them to access the crossband repeater without knowing the tone squelch that you are using. I already have the simplex frequency programmed into my mobile radio. Um, with this radio particular to set the tone squelch 
you go ahead and press the tone button. We'll cycle through the different types of tones. On the Kenwood, the first T in the black box is for a regular transmit tone only. The CT would be the CT CSS tone squelch for transmit and receive. To set the tone frequency you want to use, press the F button and you will see the T select pop up. Go ahead and press that button. We'll show the tone squelch frequency. Use the VFO knob to scroll through the frequency you want to use. I like to use the tone squelch frequency that is outside of the normal fr tone frequencies used in your in the area. Um, common ones around here would be like 100 hertz, 88.5, 103.5, 140, 1.3. Uh, with this one, I'll pick the 162.2. For the tone squelch frequency, press in on the VFO knob to confirm it. Now that I have the simplex side set up, also recommend using low power when you're using crossband. It keeps your signaling closer. Um, won't won't affect people if someone happens to be using that frequency further away. Like I said it's most of the time when you're using the crossband will be for around the house camp some place where you need to access a repeater or further away. Um, so Use the minimum power necessary. I always like to use low power and then adjust up accordingly depending on if I'm going to be hiking away from my vehicle. I need my vehicle mo vehicle's mobile radio to access a distant repeater that the mobile can act, get into but my HT won't be able to. So Then we will go ahead and set up the B side of the radio. Um, to do that, you just scroll to the frequency you want to use. Like I said in this case, I will be setting it up using the Rocky Mountain Radio League Evergreen Repeater, which is 145.340. You can go through set up a simplex frequency to use with crossband and save it into memory so you don't have to set it up every time you want to go use it. I would recommend setting up two with the on UHF and also two on VHF if you are going to save them into memory. They give you options for both. Crossband repeat you have to use a different band for your simplex is the other side. You have to go UHF to VHF or VHF to UHF. You can't use the same band for both. So now that I have my B channel set to the repeater I'm going to access through the crossband repeat, I can go ahead and activate the crossband repeater on it now. To do that, you power the radio off. Prior to powering it off, I recommend looking at these display and seeing which button is labeled tone. Um, with this particular radio the tone is the third button from the left. To turn the APRS on you press the in on the tone button while powering the radio on holding both in. Once the radio starts to turn power up you can go ahead and release the buttons. As you can see now the radio is locked and I can't change anything on it in this state. The PTT indicator is flashing indicating that it is on crossband repeat. I'll set up my HT to also use that. And that I will use my FT2. Go ahead and turn it on. band A, I will go ahead and go to VFO mode, turn the frequency to 445700. You can see there is no tone squelch or anything set, so I'll have to go through set the tone squelch up on the HT. Now with it being 
cross band to a repeater, I will have to go through. It seems out this is a dual BFO radio. I can set the channel B to the repeater's input frequency with no offset. And also showing that there is a transmit tone, disable lap. Now if I transmit on the 145.340 on my HT, it won't access the repeater, it'll transmit on that as if it's a simplex frequency. To transmit via the crossband, switch back to the simplex frequency you're using for the crossband and go ahead and key up your into the repeater. Go ahead and do a demonstration, see if anyone's on the repeater. KA6ETE testing. And you can see that when it keyed up, both sides of the mobile radio indicated that it was transmitting and receiving on both. Um, then the repeater tone came back through the HT and the mobile radio. Now as far as the mobile radio is concerned, it, you can't use the microphone to key up anything. It won't allow you. You have to use a second radio in order to transmit. Now we go through and turn the repeater off. Or first I should transmit on the other frequency. I'll just go to 145340. KA6ET. And doing that, just like I said, it's giving my call sign on all three frequencies that are being used. Um, if so, when I transmit through the crossband, it goes to the repeater's input frequency of 144.740. So technically, I'm not, I am not transmitting my frequency on the 340 via simplex in the immediate area. With that, now you will to shut off, turn off the crossband repeater on the radio. You follow the last steps, turn it on, power the radio off. Now the tone button, press and hold the tone button while powering the radio on. Once it starts to power back on, you'll see now the PTT indicator is not flashing, meaning it's in standard operating mode. I can switch between the channels on the radio um, and everything's back to normal. The big thing to remember with crossband repeating, you're using three frequencies, not two, when using it to access a repeater. Keep that in mind. Also setting a tone full CT CSS tone squelch to prevent anyone from accidentally transmitting into the repeater when they're not expecting to and they think they're only on simplex. Hope that helps. Um, there will be a full description right up on setting it up also if you'd like to print something out. We'll have quick reference guides available, explain everything. I encourage everyone to learn how to use the radio properly and efficiently. It can help you when you're out in the field. Till then, 7-3, be sure to hit, click the subscribe button and watch for additional videos coming out. Have a good day.